you know, I have pledged in one of my recent videos that I shall stop hoarding and collecting useless, almost unusable stuff just for uh, the sake of it. Uh, and I sort of kept that promise, though I still couldn't uh, fully commit. So I went, uh, I went to my local free, flea market and I got this thing for two euros. Yes, you've heard that right. Well, actually, 2.10, uh, 2 euros and 10 cents or something like that. But it cost me the princely sum of 10 lei. And it's a Nokia 6500 slide version with Carl Zeiss optics, presumably. Yeah, the back lid is a bit loose and one of the keys does not work, though the device itself is in pretty good nick except these uh, minor scratches or rather, well, mediocre scratches on top. So yeah, without any further ado, let's start the device and see what's what about it. Yes, I would like to start without a SIM card. So here we go, the Nokia 6500 slide. Now, um, this is from way back when Nokia's still made good quality phones and were, I don't know, were not on the brink of um, total oblivion and uh, market uh, share collapse. So let me just look this thing up on the internet and I'll give you some gist of what it was all about. So, um, Naturally, this is a pre-Android, pre-Apple, pre-touchscreen um, smartphone. It was launched in 2007. Um, it's um, an all-metal construction or at least an all-metal chassis construction. There are several bits of plastic here, but uh, the general feel of the phone is that it's extremely well made even after all these years. These are the types of phone that Nokia's were known for and renowned for. So really, um, let me just um, check some more data here. The display, the body itself is, well, it's steel mostly, metal. Um, uh, it's got 96.5 by 46.5 by 16.4 millimeters. I'll link, I'll um, put some dimensions in uh, in there as well so you can see what I'm actually on about. It's got a 2.2 inch TFT, 16 million color display with a 33.4 body to screen ratio, which is not bad for the time and a 240 by 320 pixel, which is QVGA, with a 4.3, 4 to 3 ratio at 182 pixel per inch density. Uh, it's got micro SD, um, a 3.15 megapixel autofocus um, camera by Carl Zeiss Optics, with LED flash and uh, 480p 15 resolution video capability. So let's see if we can start this thing up. Uh, the D-pad has a bad uh, function. Uh, the bottom button does not want to work, but that's not really such a big issue considering what I paid for this thing. Let me see if I can find the camera and we'll take some pics. So oddly enough, the camera works and I have been uh, able to uh, get it to function. Though, as you can plainly see, it's not a huge, uh, <laughs> it's not a great um, unit. Low light is not its friend and really, let's see if I can focus on it. Yeah, there's a button here on the side, right there, which allows you to focus on stuff. So a quick action allows you to focus, which is really neat. Let's see if I can take a pic. 
Yes, and I have managed to do so. Not sure I'm into focus right now, but there we go. Yeah, so here is my image. Not this one, though. What about this one? Yeah, so... um. <laughs> Really not that bad of an image. Let's see if I can zoom. Well, not great either, so we'll leave that be. I don't know. In 2007, what was Nokia doing? Well, they were on their way out, really. Uh, the writing was on the wall, though they didn't want to accept it, or they just ran out of options and uh, really... Um, ways to improve and gain traction on the market um, back to their former glory. Now the construction is interesting as it it's pretty neat. It still has that mechanical feel. The slider works perfectly even though the this phone has seen some uh, well, some rough days and rough periods. Uh, it still functions. Um, most of the buttons work with the exception of this uh, lower D-pad. And really, it's... Well, I don't know how to put it better. It's got that indestructible work anywhere in any conditions feel that only Nokia's were able to emulate and to mimic. No other device since has been able to, um, to provide that feel, but that might be because, well, most modern uh, gadgets and phones work under any conditions anyway. But back, way back when, uh, back when Nokia was king, well, they were king because of this reason particularly. They were the only ones able to, to provide that quality feel or... Anyway, that's how we viewed them. Now, in terms of connectivity here, we have a USB port, a mini USB port, I believe. And this little uh, button releases the hinge for the... or the clasp for the back panel. Now I shall be closing this thing up so I can show it to you in what the inside looks like. What the inside of a phone with a removable, removable battery looks like. Which is sort of like this. So yeah, let me just zoom in a bit. Yeah, so there we go. I guess that's all she wrote, folks, because uh, there's not much going on with this device. The battery is a bit swollen, but I have managed to charge it up correctly um, with my trusting um, with my trusting um, universal charger unit. So, sorry about that lag, I was just focusing on the phone. So, yeah, really, this is it. There's, there's not much going on with it. I have mentioned a few... Uh, so, really, that's all that she wrote, folks. I have mentioned a few uh, features, but not, by, not much, because it's not about what this phone can do. Um, let's get to key questions you might have as a collector. Uh, could this be used as a daily driver? Well, I don't know, strange as it might sound, a backup phone without a modern smartphone tagging um, disadvantages. Yeah, this could be, a, I don't know, a, in an emergency phone or stuff like that. Um, is it a collectible item? Well, yes, I think it is. All metal construction, beautiful fit and finish, um, exquisite feel to it, and plus it's a Nokia, so who doesn't remember Nokia phones? I 
think this will slowly appreciate in value. Not by much because it was built and sold by the tens or hundreds of thousands, though not millions. Uh, but yeah, I think it will retain some wow factor, some collectible desirability and small value, if you will. Uh, what I think this would be worth in the um, shape that it is, about 20 to 30 euros. It needs some work, but yeah, it's a good prop, a good conversation starter. And well, since I'm collecting old, useless, obsolete and quirky tech stuff, yeah, I sort of love devices like these. So I guess that's it for me um, and this short clip. See you around in the next one. Bye bye.